Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Serena. So today, as you can tell by the title, is going to be a seed collection video. My husband and I decided this year that we were going to go hog wild and grow our own fruits and vegetables with pretty minimal experience. So it's going to be a fun spring and summer and like technically a little bit of fall because we have such a long growing season here in California, especially where we live. So I wanted to show you guys a seed collection for my garden lovers out there. We're just gonna jump into it because I'm gonna try to make this video somewhat quick. Yeah, right. Those of you guys that know me know that that's total BS. But I'm just gonna show you guys what seeds we purchased this year. I'll let you know what we've started already and what we're gonna plant. Um, and we'll just get going. These are all Baker Creek heirloom seeds. Every single one of these are heirloom seeds. I will talk a little bit more towards the very end of the video on why it is said that heirloom seeds are very important for biodiversity and all that stuff. But for now, let's just get to the fun stuff. I'm going to show you guys what we have here and in no particular order. And um, for you guys who are new here, welcome. My name is Serena. I upload videos on basically just all lifestyle topics. I have a lifestyle channel. And if you're new here, you don't know that my dog's super loud. So I have a shepherd and a, and a toy poodle. And whenever I'm filming is the time that they really wanna make some noise. So if you hear snuffling, barking, whining, growling, barking, it's my fur children and I will apologize for them in advance. Okay, let's get started. So these are, just like I said, no particular order. I just kind of like tried to bunch them together and organize them a little bit. This is an onion. These are super old onions. This is also known as the brown Spanish onion, and I'm gonna butcher the French pronunciation. It's Jean Pai, I don't know if it's Pai, like or paille de vertu. This is cool. This is an old onion variety and it says it was introduced in 1793. 1793. So needless to say, this is a very old, over 200 year old variety of onion. Super excited to grow this. We have started this, I believe. We have started little shoots of it, so we'll see. We might direct sow that in the garden, but we'll see how the ones that we started do. This is a onion crimson forest bunching onion. That's what the package looks like. Hmm. See, does it say anything special about this? A vibrant bunching onion. Beautiful, brilliant, red stalks, very flavorful, very unique and colorful, forms small bulbs. So I don't know if it's the red of Florence, which is my next one to show you. I love when they have the pretty illustrations. This is the red of Florence onion. I don't know if it's the bunching or the red of Florence. No, it must be this one. The red of Florence supposedly has like superior flavor. And we have a book, um, if you guys are subscribers, you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it. But my husband and I picked up a book on Amazon. It's called Grow for Flavor. And it's such a great book. If you guys are gardeners, you guys probably already have it. But it's about like biohacks and you know how to make your stuff taste better. And um, the author was going over onion varieties and he said that this is like one of the best tasting onions. I don't know if he said it's finicky and hard to grow, but we'll see. So those are our onions. Husband was very excited to pick up some onions. This next one, I myself and my husband were really excited about. This is the Rocky Top Seed Blend. We got the bulk pack. This bulk packet has 5,000 seeds. <laughs> So a lot of seeds, you hear them rattling around in there. And this is just like one of their most popular varieties of lettuce, I believe. It's just like a really soft, yummy lettuce, like the stuff that you're gonna pay high dollar for in the store because it doesn't keep well in the grocery store. But if you're cutting it from your garden every day, it's fresh and amazing. We've actually already started growing this and um, we've been like snipping the little microgreens and eating those with our salads and it's been so good. So I really like this, I'm really excited about it. This next one is German chamomile. If I can find a photo of like what it's supposed to look like in real life IRL, rather than this cutie cute little illustration, I'll insert the photo here for you. Um, I'm excited to grow chamomile. I, I feel like I wanna learn how to make tea with it, we'll see. I know that it's gonna attract bees, um, which is one of the reasons we picked it up, is so that it can attract 
pollinators. Beautiful small flowers make a relaxing tea with a sweet fruity fragrance, medicinal and attractive plants. So we did start these. They're not doing poorly, but they're so small. I feel like we're gonna have to kind of direct sow some of these in the garden a little bit later. Okay, next up we've got spinach. Marcus, my husband, picked this out. This is spinach monstru de viroflé. I don't know how to say that. I'm just trying to be fancy. Monstru looks like it would mean monstrous in French, right? Big leaves, smooth and deep green in color. Very fast growing plants are popular for fall planting. A gourmet French heirloom that was developed prior to 1866. So that means that these seeds have been passed down in some capacity since 1866. That I can't get over, that's why we're just strictly buying heirloom. Okay, next one, we've actually started this. This is broccoli calabrese, this is my husband's doing. We've learned from our reading that broccoli tends to be kind of like finicky with other plants, but we planted it anyway to kind of just see how it does. This says calabrese green sprouting broccoli, Italian heirloom brought to America in the 1800s, five to eight inch heads and many side shoots. So we planted that, I'll let you know how that goes. If you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, head over and follow me on Instagram. My hair, you guys, I'm never gonna stop touching it. It's, we let it air dry, so it's a little crazy. Uh, follow me on Instagram because I'm constantly on Instagram stories showing you guys how my little seedlings and plants are doing. All right, so next we have corn. This is Cherokee long ear corn. And we specifically got this because of my husband, and I'll tell you why. My husband is obsessed with popcorn. So this is supposedly a great corn for popcorn, and it's like different colors. So it's just supposed to be really pretty and easy to grow. And if you go to Baker Creek online, um, if you guys aren't familiar with Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, they have reviews on there, which is really cool. So like before you even buy the seed variety, you can look at the reviews and see how people felt, like did it grow for them, if the popcorn tasted good, all that stuff. So selected by Carl White Eagle Barnes, the late Cherokee corn collector from Oklahoma. Beautiful blend of brightly colored long ears, five to seven inches long, Wonderful, one, wonderful, wonderful for fall decorations. Great for popping popcorn. So, husband is very, very excited about that. We're not gonna plant that till a little bit later. We gotta let it get real hot outside, and it will out here. This we got for attracting pollinators, and because cute sunflowers. So this is a red sun sunflower. And I will Google image search if I can find a photo of these sunflowers IRL in real life. Um, then I'll insert it for you right here. Um, then let's see what this one says. Stately branching plants reach five to six feet tall, are covered with dozens of ornamental blooms, red to red orange. Single flowers are highlighted with a hint of yellow around the centers. Blooms over a very long season, attracting bees and butterflies, and later, the tiny seeds attract birds. And if you guys already know what's going on in my life, I recently lost my mind and bought five chicks who are going to be giant chickens, giant hens. So I think that when the season is over, my hens are really going to appreciate these sunflowers, sunflower seeds, don't you think? I think so. Okay, so we've got herb bee balm lemon. So this is an herb. You see the picture there, ooh la la, looks kind of pretty. We got this for, you guessed it, to attract bees and pollinators in the yard. So an annual lemon flavored variety, superb tea plant, striking pink and purple flowers, beautiful and tasty. So this, you can dry the leaves and make tea with it. Kind of exciting. So that is bee balm, lemon bee balm. All right, next herb. This is chevril, chevril. I think it looks like, what is it, parsley? Yeah, so it says on the back here, it's also known as French parsley. Let's see if there's any interesting information. Oh, it says it has like an anise-like flavor. So that'll be nice. Okay, so another culinary herb is cilantro. This is slow bolt cilantro, which I think it just means that it flowers um, not as quickly because you don't usually want herbs to flower very quickly because I think it affects the flavor like negatively. 
So there's that. And then this we've already started and um, grown and tasted and we have it in like little cups in uh, my kitchen like windowsill and it's delicious. This is Emily Basil. So it looks just like the like varietal that you're always seeing in the grocery store. What is the one that you see in the grocery store? I want to say Calabrese, but I don't think it is. Genovese. It's Genovese basil. So this is like a mini version, uh, version. It's a mini version of Genovese basil. It's delicious. We've been putting it in our water and stuff. I can't wait to get that in the garden and get it like really, really growing. This too we've started and it's doing great. This is lemon balm. This is another one that you can use for tea. So deliciously lemon flavored, great in tea, a vigorous, hearty, adaptable plant. This I've heard runs like crazy like kind of like mint it's like I think it's in the mint family so it just spreads like crazy so you have to like have it in a container very seriously like to keep it from like taking over your garden and I actually even have it right now excuse the lipstick on the glass but I actually have it in my glass right now mm. and it just adds like the slightest lemony flavor and so refreshing in water so lemon balm i can't wait to plant some more of that like in the garden yum my husband and i are basil fanatics and lemon balm i think it's gonna that's lemon balm mint which i actually didn't buy mint um because i wanted to have control of the variety i might buy some hybrid mint because i'm interested in some of like the f1 hybrid um like chocolate mint a pineapple mint like all that stuff so I'm on the fence. I, I know that mint is gonna be super easy to grow, so I don't know, I might pick up some mint from like Lowe's or something, or I might get heirloom, I'm not sure. Um, this next one is a free seed order. See, it says thank you for your order. And they'll give you free seeds, and this is cinnamon basil, and we actually already started growing some cinnamon basil, and spoiler alert, it kinda tastes like cinnamon. It's really weird in like a cool way. So we've been putting that in our water and you know chopping it up and all that stuff too. So really exciting about that. If I can find a photo, I'll put a photo of what cinnamon basil looks like right here and in, in real life photo. So you guys can check that out. Okay, here's some more. So we've got cucumber, Parisian pickling cucumber. This is what it sounds like. It's a pickling cucumber. It says the old French gherkin or cornichon. Pickler. Great for making tiny sweet pickles. So I actually purchased this and pretty much all of my like cucumbers from the recommendation of watching a video from Jess. She has a YouTube channel. I've already mentioned it on my channel here before. She has a pretty big YouTube channel. Um, she has a farmstead. It's so amazing. And her channel name is Roots and Refuge Farm. If you guys are fans of gardening, I'm assuming you guys already follow her, but she has the Parisian pickling cucumbers. And so I was like, well, if she, if she, she's a very like no muss, no fuss. So like, I'm like, if, if she's growing it, it's like easy to grow. Cucumber, muncher cucumbers, and they're exactly as they sound. They're good for munching. So it says they're dual purpose and non-bitter. They're good for slicers, which means like they're good to slice and put in salads, or you can make pickles with the smaller ones, but like not as mature ones. So that's a muncher cucumber. This I am, I am so excited about this is a cucamelon or mouse melon or Mexican sour gherkin. Look at that. These look like tiny watermelons. Don't they look like tiny watermelons? So this is, again, this is one that Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm grew. And if you go back and you look at her spring videos of like her grabbing these little cucumbers off the vines in a trellis, oh my God, I'm just like, it's just, it just makes me so happy that you can just like, bite into these like little tiny watermelons. I'm just so excited about them. So small cucumber like fruit look like miniature watermelons, good fresh or pickled, refreshing tart flavor. So really excited. Now these two were Marcus's picks. I actually was very stubborn this year. I was like, I don't want to grow summer squash. And you guys know that that's because I am all about obsessed with pumpkins. If you guys know me personally, you know I'm the crazy pumpkin lady. Just, just, Follow me on Instagram and you'll see if you go to my Instagram highlights, you'll see Pumpkin Watch. I think I think it's Pumpkin Watch. Pumpkin Watch 2018. Go back and watch all of it. I'm gonna do it this year, like going hot wild. Anyways. 
summer squash. I was kind of like, I don't want to grow summer squash. And Marcus was like, we're going to grow summer squash. So this is gray zucchini. I think this may have been one of the ones in Grow for Flavor, the book that Brian Wong said is really good. Is it James Wong or Brian Wong? I'm like making stuff up. I think it might be James Wong. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Wong. Um, but I think this was a variety that he said was a tasty variety of zucchini. And like you can make zucchini bread and like uh, zucchini noodles. There's a lot you can do with zucchini. It just doesn't excite me as much as like pumpkins, you know? Great tasting, high quality, gray green zucchini, yields well, flesh is firm, mild, very tasty. And then this one is Romanesco. So this is Costata Romanesco squash. Famous Italian ribbed zucchini. Long fruit is fluted and ribbed, rich and very flavorful. The, uh, the one thing I am excited about, like I'm sure these are obviously are, like, are gonna taste delicious. And this, I remember this being in the Grow for Flavor book and seeing him recommend this as far as the summer squash varieties. I'm excited about eating squash blossoms. Have you guys ever had stuffed squash blossoms? Oh my goodness. Google it, Google it, Google stuffed squash blossoms. Your life will never be the same. Moving right along, some of our peppers. Okay, I think we've started all of these. Yeah, we've started all of these. So this is Cubanelle. This is a Cubanelle pepper. My husband was really excited about this one. It's prized for its sweet, mild flesh, rich flavor, and pretty colors. It's especially suited for quick cooking and has a lower water content. Best picked when yellow green for use in roasting stuffing and as a pizza topping for frying or a substitute for Anaheim peppers in a yellow mole sauce. Yum. It's one of the traditional ingredients in sofrito. It's a sweet pepper commonly used in Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, Spanish, Italian, and Slavic cuisine. So this is exciting. It kind of reminds me of like, it must be like, I don't know, like, it, like bell pepper-esque mixed with, I don't know. I'm really excited about it. We've got a couple of these started and they're doing pretty good. So I'll let you guys know how those taste as the summer co like comes and the heat comes because that's when these are really gonna start growing because it gets hot out here. And I, I, I hear tell that peppers like themselves some hot weather. So this is the, I, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Corno di Toro Gallo 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 pepper. Traditional favorite in Italy. Long eight inch tapered bullhorn shaped golden yellow peppers are sweet and spicy. They're great fresh or roasted. Large plants yield well. Uh oh, we're gonna love peppers. Our neighbors are gonna love us this year because I'm gonna be like knocking on their door. You want some peppers? You want some tomatoes? You want some? Like I'm just gonna be sharing with everybody. Among the best peppers you can grow and so delicious pure Italian seed. So excited about this. If I can find a uh, IRL photo, I'll post it right here. I'm curious. I'm really curious about that. Though I just, ugh, do you guys see why we went hog wild and just bought all of the seeds? Okay, next, I was really like sold on this. Like just from the name, Violet Sparkle Pepper. Like, excuse me, what? violet sparkle like have you ever seen anything like this no you haven't this is why heirloom seeds just like totally like snatch my heart pointed wedge-shaped fruits are purple streaked with pale yellow we originally received a few seeds of this variety from a russian seed trader ripens red very lovely and delicious sweet crisp and thick walled like violet sparkle pepper what oh man so excited about that. We started this as well and it's doing okay so far. It's like tiny little seeds, but strong, 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 strong. So this is the classic. I feel like most of you were like, well, what about jalapenos? I wouldn't forget about jalapenos, you guys. This is Craig's Grande Jalapeno Pepper. An improvised jalapeno developed at Redwood City Seeds, a big fat jalapeno that is perfect for making lots of salsa and it's got thick, flavorful flesh. I've got a couple of these pepper plants started. I'm really excited about this uh, because I love jalapenos, like stuffed jalapenos. Get out of here, are you kidding me? Oh my God. And then 
the other thing that I got so excited about was like having our own jalapenos. Thinking about uh, Joanna Gaines' book, Magnolia Table. You guys know, you guys probably have that book. Everybody and their mama has that book. Because everybody and their mama loves Joanna Gaines. And if you don't, who are you? Get out of here. She has like a recipe for pickled jalapenos. And I'm like, done. I'm going to grow my own grande jalapenos. And I'm going to pickle them. All right. Tomatillo verde. Anyone? So this is just a green tomatillo. Actually, uh, we we started these and they're doing strong. So I'm really excited. This is supposed to be like a crazy high yield. So you're supposed to get a ton of tomatillos. So I'm so excited. It's, yeah, it says, oh, and it even says huge yields as with most tomatillos. So I'm excited. Marcus makes like a really, really yummy salsa with tomatillo in it. And oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that salsa, you guys. Okay, we're edging into like the territory here. So this first one, let's let's talk, let's talk about some tomatoes. This is the green zebra tomato. I'll insert a photo of it for you right here because there's no like cute photo on the seed. This is, I think this is one of their best sellers. I don't know, it doesn't say anything about this, but I know that Marcus and I were reading the Grow for Flavor book and he was talking about tomato varieties. And he said that green zebra tomatoes are really fantastic for salsa. So we have, we just have a straight up salsa garden here. We got the jalapenos, we got the tomatillos, we got the green zebra tomatoes. So they're supposed to be like big and like striped, if you can see in the photograph. Ooh, doesn't that look amazing? Very excited about that. We have started that variety. We've also started these already. What? Look at these. You're never going to find these in the grocery store, you guys. This is this is why. Heirloom seeds, this is why. So this is Brad's Atomic Grape Tomatoes, a new release from Wild Boar Farms. And Wild Boar Farms is like strictly tomates, you guys. So if you guys want to check them out, like they're so sought after for their tomato varieties. So crack resistant cherries in totally wild technicolor shades and stripes. Extraordinarily sweet, just amazing. So I'm really excited about this. This is also, I believe, one of their best sellers. Uh, this is doing well. We've, we've already started this. I'm really excited for Brad's Atomic Tomatoes. Okay, next tomato. The pink brandy wine. Look at like the hand to tomato ratio in that photo. Come on. I wonder if I can find, also if I can find another photo, I'll put it here for you. These really intrigued me. A, because the name just gets me. The name is just, I'm like Brandywine. Just reminds me of um, Lord of the Rings. You know, the Brandywine Bridge. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Anyways, so the most popular heirloom vegetable. That's quite a statement. This is the most popular heirloom vegetable, you guys. A favorite of many gardeners, large fruit with superb flavor. A great potato leaf variety from 1885. You guys, that just gets me. That, it literally just gets me. Beautiful pink fruit up to one and a half pounds each. I'm gonna grow me some one and a half pound tomatoes, you guys. These are supposed to be kind of hard to grow, but we bought them anyway and we've started them and they're doing just fine. But we'll see, they, they seem like they grow and then like split, so what else? Oh, the tomato green giant. This is our second green tomato. We just went crazy. So along with the zebra, the green zebra tomato, we've got this green giant tomato. Most productive, best tasting tomato in our trials. Large one pound emerald green fruit, sweet and juicy. Excited about that, we, we started that and those are going strong. Like, they're doing great. And then this was a free seed and we've planted it. This is the black vernissage tomato. Here is a lovely black tomato and it's loaded with flavor as well as production. Two ounce tomato is sure to make a big splash in the garden as well as the kitchen. These are perfect for rich tasting. But that's what they look like right there. I'll insert a, like a better photo here if I just Google them for you, like Google image them, you guys can see them. These went crazy. These are growing so well. Um, we obviously don't have any fruit yet because it's with like March, but these like the plant itself is so hardy and so strong and just doing great. So you guys, we're gonna be up to our ears in tomatoes this spring and summer, just so you know. So you should just move in and live in my neighborhood because I'll just give you all the tomatoes, all the tomatoes. All right. 
let's keep going. All right, this is the second to last batch, and then I'm saving the pumpkins for last because I'm crazy. And you guys are gonna be like, have you grown pumpkins before? Do you know how much they bind? Same thing with this. You guys are just gonna think I'm crazy. The melons, y'all, the melons. So this was free because Baker Creek is amazing. I, I'm like, Whoa, what is that? It's a melon. It's a Missouri heirloom yellow flush watermelon. So it says, we are excited to offer this great old variety from the Show Me State. It produces round 20 pound melons with pale green skin and bright golden yellow flush. It's crisp, sweet, and refreshing. So I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm probably gonna plant this. Oh, we're gonna have no room, but I'm probably gonna plant it. To be honest with you this totally planting this is a kajari melon oh what's that oh you've never seen it in the grocery store that's because it's an heirloom and they don't sell good stuff from the grocery stores <laughs> just kidding sort of um, so this is a kajari melon and I purchased this because I watched roots and refuge farm Jess she grows this and she thinks it's like the best thing ever so I'm like if Jess likes it I'm gonna like it. So this is really cool. They found um, these seeds in India. So it says, this amazing early Indian melon was collected by Joseph Simcox. The fruit are brilliant copper red and are striped in green and cream, making this an extremely unusual and beautiful melon. The pale glean, the pale glean, the pale glean flesh. Pale green flesh is sweet, aromatic, and slightly musky. Um, he believes, the, the seed, seed harvester, believes that this melon originated in the Punjab and Joe spent more than eight years trying to find seeds of this extremely interesting variety. It produces a lot of two pound fruit. So these little two pound melons. I'm excited about that. Who doesn't like melons? My husband is a melon freak. Aside from being a basil freak, this boy will eat a whole watermelon to himself. Like he will eat until he has a stomach ache. That's how much he likes watermelon. He's like, you know, his family's from Oklahoma. So, you know, I, Okies love themselves some watermelon. Okay, which is why we got some melons. Okay, this, oh my God, my eyes are watering because I was laughing. This is what happens. You guys, I'm crazy. Okay, last two melons. Moon and stars, watermelon. Like, just look at that. Look at that photo. Moon and stars, watermelon. Mm -hmm. And I'll just go ahead and I'll insert some photos that I googled for you of Moon and Stars watermelons here while I tell you that this is a legendary beloved heirloom originally introduced by Peter Henderson and company in 1926. Large 40 pound fruit. Ahem. Green spangled in gold. Stunning and delicious. You guys, I'm gonna grow me a 40 pound Moon and Stars watermelon. Watch me. Alright, next. Final melon. This is a melon... Petit gris de rien, 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 petit gris, little gray. It's a little gray melon. This is a French heirloom. It's, let's see, orange flesh that is superbly sweet, flavorful, and perfumed. This variety is early and well adapted to cool climates. The fruit weigh about two pounds and have gray green rind. It's a French variety and it's of the best quality. So, it's good to have a mix of like little melons and big melons don't you I think so okay it's finally time for you guys to tell me that I've lost my damn mind my husband thinks I'm crazy he still loves me and you know he let me do this so he's an enabler so like I said you guys follow me on Instagram cuz pumpkin watch 2019 it's on it's so on Ready? Ready? Ready, 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 ready? So last year, I'll just show you, I grew some of these last year before I was savvy to the heirloom movement, but actually these are heirloom. I tried to grow this, the Jarradale pumpkin. They're supposed to be delicious. Didn't grow, but I, I don't think I had the right conditions. Big Max, oh mama, this one was huge. This is heirloom too, actually, I think. So I was like, I was kind of savvy. It's organic and heirloom. These are like 100 pound pumpkins. Last year we grew like a 60 pound one. We still have some seeds left over. Um, and then this was jack-o'-lantern. This one didn't take off, but again, I don't think I nurtured it enough. I got one of these, Illumina, the little white pumpkins. That one was heirloom too. So, my Baker Creek, Crazy Buck Wild Shipment. I mean, okay, let's just, let's just. So Buttercup Squash. 
This is like a wee little, little green pumpkin. And these are small. These are like three pounds. I hear tell that these grow crazy. So you can just like plant them and actually let them climb on a trellis. You can train them to climb on a trellis and these are supposed to be delicious for soup. Last year I grew the pumpkin like literally just for decoration. This year it's on like Donkey Kong. Like I'm growing these, I'm eating them, okay? So it says, bred at North Dakota State University in the 1920s as a replacement for sweet potatoes, this very sweet dry flesh of excellent quality, deep orange flesh, green skin, three pound fruit. So I hear that these are just amazing. Good for soup, good for pies, and the reviews on Baker Creek said that they're really good too. This one, look at this, Long Island Cheese Pumpkin. A longtime favorite on Long Island, a uh, buff colored flattened six to 10 pound fruit looks like wheels of cheese, long keeping favorite for pies. So this supposedly is a good pie pumpkin, really excited about that. Okay, this one is the Rouge Vif Detente Pumpkin. You guys, you guys, this here pumpkin was rumored to be, okay, my, I crack my friends up with this, they hate me. I keep saying this to them. I go, did you hear? Did you hear about the Rouge Vif Detente Pumpkin? Because <laughs> the Rouge Vif Detente Pumpkin was rumored to be the pumpkin that they used for the pumpkin pie at the Thanksgiving feast. Rumor has it. Google it. You don't believe me? Ask the dishes. Google it. So Rouge Vif Detente Pumpkin. Most beautiful flattened and ribbed large fruit are gorgeous deep red orange. A very old French heirloom, this was the most common pumpkin in the central market in Paris back in the 1800s. This flesh is tasty in pies or baked and it can also be picked small like summer squash and fried. And it has a good yield. So I'm really excited about this. These are like those red orange pumpkins that you see in the grocery store that are gorgeous. I'll insert a photo here for you. I'm sorry, I'm seriously, just. Google it. It is rumored to be, rumored to be, the thing, the, the Thanksgiving pumpkin, okay? Just in case you're curious. I've lost my mind, you guys. <sighs> okay, last two. Ready, 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 ready? Mousquet de Provence. Look at that. Look at that squashy darling. Mousquet de Provence. Another French pumpkin, because the French, like me, they just love them some pumpkins. I don't know what to tell you. Wine and pumpkins. Me and the French, same goals, same goals. So delicious French heirloom, big flat pumpkins up to 20 pounds, shaped like large wheels of cheese. I also love cheese. Me and the French also have this in common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna grow it, I'm gonna stick it on my porch. And then this one, I like, I just can't even with the name, Gaillou Daisines. It's possibly our most beautiful heirloom squash. This flattened round 10 to 15 pound fruit has a gorgeous salmon peach colored skin that's covered with large warts. Isn't that beautiful? But these are like the little cute warty pumpkins that you see at the grocery store. Now you know the name, but can you pronounce it? It's very popular in France. I mean the French, I'm telling you. It can be used for soups and also be baked. French heirloom. That's it. You guys, we did it. I went through my entire seed collection. How long is this video gonna be? I don't know. I really don't know. But that's it. If you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel and you wanna follow my wackadoodness, click that subscribe button down below. And tell me what you guys are growing this year. You guys growing anything interesting? Are you guys gonna do pumpkins this year? Like me, like Psycho Serena? Let me know. And let me know what out of all of these you're most excited for me to grow. And after seeing this haul, aside from thinking I'm crazy, do you now wanna grow things? Because I feel like you wanna grow things. Oh, you guys, we haven't even talked about why heirlooms are important. If I talked and like went on about why heirloom varieties are important, you guys are gonna strangle me because this video is gonna be 75 minutes long. Basically, it's important for biodiversity. I'll just really quickly equate it to something. Aside from the fact that like, wow, cool, 1800s seeds, right? Think about it like with animals becoming extinct, because of the GMO, genetically modified seeds and crops out there, because of that, all the heirloom varieties are starting to just kind of dwindle out and trickle out. Basically, they're just gonna become extinct. So it's really important to further the heirloom movement and try to, you know, purchase and support heirloom seed 
sellers and growers and buy heirloom fruits and vegetables because if we don't it's they're just going to be extinct and they're just going to trickle out and it's important for the world to have biodiversity that's my like short spiel on it if you guys are interested in it and like the non-gmo movement you guys can actually go to Baker Creek's website. Aside from purchasing their seeds, you can read a lot about the, the information, really in depth, the information in the heirloom seed movement. I'm sure I'm rambling, you guys. I'm gonna stop, but it's important. I actually feel like it's very important, which is why I went hog wild, <laughs> bought a bunch of heirloom seeds. And they're supposed to just taste amazing in comparison to the GMO stuff that you find in the grocery store because the stuff that's GMO, those things are genetically modified to yield, have high yields because they want to feed people, they want to make money, and they want to grow tons of crops. So they don't care about the flavor, they just want to grow a ton of crops. So think about it in that sense. Heirloom stuff is usually more delicate. It doesn't keep as well in the grocery store. That's why when you go to the grocery store and you see heirloom tomatoes, you're like, geez, that's expensive. It's because they're soft and flavorful and they're not gonna last on a shelf the way that a genetically modified tomato is. There's, I personally don't think that there's anything wrong with like F1 hybrids. There's a thing called F1 hybrids. Those are grown for like just like special like traits and stuff but once you get into the gmo territory it gets a little cray cray but anyways that's that's my personal opinion some people are like no not even hybrids and i'm like okay 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 but anyways i love you guys thanks for watching my seed haul uh give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you didn't keep it to yourself all right love you guys Mwah. i'll see you in the next one